All right, there we go. It's live. So episode dip 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 dip. <laughs> yeah, that's the way we started off. Try to say episode, and it just trips right over itself. All right. Yeah, well, it makes it more entertaining for everyone else. Well, somebody's waiting. We had four people wait at one point. Cool. Now we're down to three. See if they all stay alive. I have a fly in my room, and it's driving me nuts. <laughs> have cats for flies yeah but I actually locked the cats out today so i wouldn't get kamikaze cuddled by a cat and knocked over oh. i have a catch 22 here there's a fly but the cat will mess with the show but it'll mm -hmm. catch the fly it's uh. i have no idea i just out where it's sunny <laughs> yeah it's kind of like an ice box inside it's really cold in here yes yeah <laughs> 20 degrees in the house. Compared to... Yeah. It's on the chilly side. About three minutes away of finishing my new, my new stand. Ooh, that's exciting. Yeah. Should I need to finish today? Too many other things to do the rest of the week. All kinds of work line to do. Irrigation to do. Cleaning to do. Planting to do. Prep works. Will they make a, a blue song out of that? Blue song out of it? Yep. I'm certain. Or a sad it. country song? Yeah. Well. <laughs> nah. Don't. Too many things to do. Not enough time to do what you want. Yeah, well. Some sad cowboy dude. I'm sure there's already a bunch out there. We just have to go searching. I'm not going to search for them. Not, not, not interested. Really don't care what? too much. What? You're in hearing about somebody's horrible, horrible luck? Yeah. <laughs> don't worry. The next, uh, next songs with the uh, self-driving cars will be the cowboy songs about the truck driving away. Actually, Yeah. <laughs> They got all kinds of crazy things. All right, we're all the way down to one viewer. Wow, everybody abandoned us. I guess we're not entertaining enough. Yeah, well, so be it. I'm going to blame the fly because it's irritating me. Blame whatever. Get the show, get it all done up and out for all the peoples out there that watch it, listen to it, and get great entertainment value and uh, knowledge from it. Hopefully, entertainment <laughs> value. Working on entertainment value. Slowly but surely. Oh, well. Random brain meat thought. I'm really excited for the chickens that are going to be coming our way. Oh, yeah. Chickens are supposed to hatch this week. Yeah. They're supposed to hatch the same week as my daughter's birthday, which is kind of really cool. Mm -hmm. This morning, I heard birds, and I didn't recognize the sound of the birds. I'm like, hey, wait a minute. Are the chickens already hatching? And then I realized that it was birds I'm used to, but the cats were already outside, and they were just really yelling at the cats. Yeah. So it sounded different. And the cat was out there <laughs> annoying the chick. Yeah, that's just ghost. Ghost is kind of evil. So for those listening, ghost is a gray tabby, and we have three cats, a black one, a white one, and a gray tabby. Of the three, only the gray tabby scares the heck out of the chickens. and. He's also the only one that is so interested in chickens, he'll like run right up to the edge of the gate area just to stare at them. Then they flap their wings and start freaking out and he runs off and goes to rolling dirt. I think he's just proud of himself that he gets such a reaction. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> well. He even comes close and they spot him. They climb up into the rafters areas and they and they, and they squawk for an hour. Although he has found a place where he can hide out of their sight and watch them now. Well, good for him. Yep. Good for him and all that comes with it. Right. Yeah, I've got no uh, random random stuff here this morning. I'm kind of lacking in <clears throat> random conversation here. To... Obviously, you need to ingest more sugar. No, I've got enough sugar. That's. <laughs> Lack of sugar is not much. 
Lack of well, focus. that sucks. That would be an easy fix. Lack of focus. There's the problem. Ah. Lack of focus on this particular task. This particular task, which no matter how hard I try, it still takes an hour and a half to accomplish. Oh, sorry. I keep yawning. Yeah, well, we'll do that in the show. Once we go live, no more boring people. You know, no more putting them to sleep. <laughs> you, know, you can put them to sleep while we're waiting for the, uh, you know, opening uh, salvos of the show. Well, it's actually kind of interesting. I've noticed that if I start feeling my allergies, I end up yawning more. Mm. I'm not really sure why. I theorize it has to do with the stuffy nose that comes with the allergies. Could be. My allergy pill does not work against cottonwood very well. Yeah, we got a lot of cottonwood. Yeah, we do. And I'm I'm noticing that like I'll take my allergy pill and still two hours later after I've taken it, I'm still sneezing and stuffy every time that we have mm. those clouds of fluff floating by. Yeah. Yeah, so much so so much so that it collects in piles. Yeah. I guess you could take it and use it as stuffing if you're not allergic to it. If you can collect enough of it, I suppose. It's very fine crap. It is. It'd probably be really warm, though, if you could actually collect enough of it. Yeah. Who knows? There you go. There's a way to keep kids busy. Tell them to go collect enough cottonwood to make a stuffy. Yeah. I'm busy <laughs> for a week. It would keep them occupied until, you know, unless, of course, they got bored, but... Well, they will get bored. Automatically get bored. I don't know. Going after cotton whiff fluffs, not only would they have to, like, try to capture them out of the air, but they would have to go wandering pretty far and wide to capture it all. So it might actually keep them interested for a while. Some might create, get creative and figure out how to make a net and just hold it. <laughs> yeah, those are the uh, box thinkers we like to see. Looks good. All the sounds sounding good. Bits and pieces. Close to. Anyone listening? Here's anything going on with our sound? Let us know. Just write something in the the chat box, I guess. I guess it's a chat box. I suppose it's a chat box. Every once in a while, I actually look at it. Live chat, I guess, is what it's called, technically speaking. Yeah. Well, if you're gonna get technical. Oh, you sound a bit quieter than me this morning. Yeah, I'm not at full volume on my voice yet. How's that? Probably a lot better. I don't go full <laughs> volume till we go live with the show. Fair enough. Saving your energy for the important bits. Yeah, I get that. Well, I just don't care. Well, I do care, but <laughs> I don't care. Well, in the pre-stream, I'm just sort of mumbling. No, he wasn't closer to the mic. He just talked at actual full volume. No, I That's the difference between him talking. <laughs> I hit full volume. I've got a voice that'll carry across a field. When Especially I, when your child is irritating you. When I decide to use it. <laughs> when I used to give presentations at a sonic hall, it's a really echoey hall, and it's hard to get people to understand you. I could get people to understand me up in the up in the balconies out of mic that is talented i have a voice and i just don't use it i can Fair carry enough. i can carry very far Especially so you have the singer's down. capability without the ability to sing oh, i can sing just great so provided <laughs> you, like, you like hearing newly invented notes <laughs> all right on that note, let's uh, have some music and uh, carry on to showtime. These are the days of thunder. We're going to make time stand still. <laughs> Comes, we gotta have some fun. 
we get started? What? Absolutely. You really need to uncork your mic when you do that. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for WordPress plugins A to Z, not B. It's episode 602, and we have plugins for redirection of QRs, the works security scanning, and WordPress news, all coming up on WordPress plugins from A to Z. WordPress. It's the most popular content management and website solution on the internet. And with over 80,000 plugins to choose from, how do you separate the junk from the gem? Join us for a weekly, unrehearsed conversation about the latest and greatest in WordPress plugins. This is WordPress Plugins from A to Z. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be hiding out down the globe today. Coming to you direct from the oasis deep in the heart of the Cowichan Valley. I'm John Overall, and with me, it's the ever lovely. Burlfra. And we have the usual great show for you today. You know, got to catch the pre streams. Today's was a little bit on the low side, down low, boring, and whatnot. But hey, sometimes they're very exciting. We have all kinds of cool stuff there. So make sure you check out the YouTubes and uh, catch us. We always start a little 15 minutes early to 10 minutes early. Anyway, I really don't have a whole heck of a Thank lot. you for sharing, John. Now get down from that soapbox. Welcome to episode 602, playing with the best WordPress plugins. We got a couple of great in-depth plugins to cover for you, some recent news in both the WordPress world and the tech world in general, and some awesome WordPress tips. In the chat room there, uh, Hemdi and I have come to the agreement that our mission between now and the next week is to get the new word that I accidentally made through a typo, Godo, out there. We'll see what happens. <laughs> And we have some exciting an exciting announcement today. Um, we have redone our website, WPPlugins A to Z .com, and we'll be launching it very soon. So keep an eye out for that. And for those keep of you on the YouTubes, you get a preview of it. Yep. Actually, quite nice if I do say so myself. Mm, that's very nice. <laughs> keep going. So some reminders before we start the show today. Remember that the show starts at 12.30 p.m. Pacific time with a pre-stream starting around 12.15, 12.20-ish Pacific time. The pre-stream is where we twiddle with the dials and knobs and really just warm up our voices. Sometimes it's entertaining, sometimes it's a little boring. We're yawning, getting ready for the show. Come and check it out and you'll, and you'll be able to see. Our show notes for each episode can be found at WPPluginsAtoZ.com. The newest show notes will be up within 24 hours and on our front page. Don't forget that this is a value for value show and that if you are and that you are a big part of its creation. You are our producers and we need you to help us to produce. So get on out there, hit some like button, share an episode or two. Let people know that you help to produce the longest running WordPress plugins podcast. That's it for reminders. Don't forget to stick around till the end of the show for some possibly life altering advice or just, you know, decent answers to questions that you may not have thought to ask yet. Absolutely. Please, can everybody be quiet? Please be quiet. Shut up! And now the news with Amber. I think I might have jumped the gun. I was just going to say, you jumped the gun a bit there. We haven't gone by through our artist yet. Yep. This week's artist is Greg's Graphic. This is an older art piece from our art vaults. And you can go and check that on our site. This week, it makes me think of the song Sweet Home Alabama. I really like it. I like guitars. I tried playing one. I tried learning to play for like three years. Never could figure it out. Flute is my instrument, not not guitar. <laughs> oh, now we need the uh, news. Please, can everybody be quiet? Yep. Please be quiet. Shut up! And now the news with Amber. Here we go. <laughs> now you got it on time. Good job. <laughs> So for news this week, I was actually surprised. There's really nothing new in the WordPress world, really. I mean, the last bit of news came out on May 31st, and that was or, uh, on May 27th. But, I mean, we do have our WordPress vulnerability report. This one came out on May 31st. There is a decent list of patched vulnerabilities and a long list of plugins with, without uh, the patches yet to check out. The ones I most easily recognize are... Custom post type generator, easy admin menu, easy captcha, this day in history, 
and WP tiles. There's a lot more. So go check out our show notes, click on the link and look through the list of plugins. There's also some WordPress theme vulnerabilities to be aware of though. They are harsh one, viral and viral news. So if you use these or someone you know uses these, be aware, check it out, see if it's a vulnerability that is going to really put a damper on your on your site, make it really not safe. Yep, and keep an eye out for when they come out with the patches. You definitely want to keep yourself up to date. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, there's only one piece of news from the WordPress world this week, and it's from May 27th. And that is the, the announcement that WordPress turned 20, and there were parties all over the world for it. They were in Geneva, Los Angeles, Istanbul, Bangkok, Langhor, Jakarta, Mumbai, over 150 different locations. So you can go and check out the report on this. You can find the link in our show notes. That's honestly all I could find on WordPress. I was really surprised. Yeah, well, summertime, everyone's <laughs> thinking of relaxing. That's a good point. <laughs> Hemdian said, there can't be no news. Maybe you could ask our overlord chat GPT to make up some. Sure. Why not? That might <laughs> I be did a... come across. Hmm? Go ahead. I, I did come across this. Uh, 10 most common passwords to avoid for 2023. So it seems that this list hasn't really changed much over the last however many years. Yeah. I mean, the top three to avoid are password, one, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And QWERTY. That's the same passwords I was told to avoid when I was in elementary school. It just shows that the same number of people are still brainless. So it's all good. <laughs> so for those out there who maybe do still use these passwords, I would recommend looking into, like, there, there's a lot of, of password programs that will remember your passwords for you and they're secure in and of themselves. I would recommend you start using those because they will generate the passwords and remember them for you. And then they'll set up those password programs and use one, two, three, four, five, six <laughs> to protect that program. Yeah. Might want to get a little more inventive with the passwords if you are using these old passwords. Pencils not on the list anymore? No, I didn't see pencil. I didn't know that was an issue. <laughs> no, no, no. They, they, password, one, two, three, quest, or guest, QWERTY, still on the list. <laughs> Looks like the numbered ones are still are the top tens now. Yeah. One, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> I think my favorite password somebody put on, put on something I was trying to hack into one time was fuck off. Hmm? Actually, I kind of like that. Yeah. I was trying to, <laughs> I was trying to get into a, a laptop. They had the uh, they had the BIOS passworded, so you couldn't even boot the machine without the password. That was back in the day, though. And did you get cranky at it? I got cranky at it, and I told it to <laughs> fuck off, typed it in there, and all of a sudden I was in. I went, Whoa, wait a minute, really? <laughs> <laughs> that is entertaining. Uh huh. Yes. <laughs> all right. So there is some extras for everyone to check out. There's some information on malware and different things that are going on around the world with ChatGPT and other things. Now for dragon rating time. Absolutely, let's wander in there. Okay, plugin I've got for you today. This one here came about because, well, recently I had to dive back into this cesspool. And the cesspool I'm talking about is QR codes. It seems they've had a resurgence again in the last couple of years. I've been ignoring them for several years. I remember when they were really cool about um, six, seven, maybe eight years ago. They came out. Everybody thought they were the next big thing. And I think they were maybe ahead of them, themselves. And I just didn't use them and left it be, you know. For But recently, I had the necessity of building out a flyer. And we needed a QR code on it so that people could just, you know, QR code and go directly to the web page in question. And of course, you go to restaurants now everywhere, they're using QR codes for their menus, and the list goes on and on and on for what QR codes. They're actually being used the way they were envisioned to be used once upon a time. So what I was doing is I said, okay, well, let's dive in and see what QR codes we have, or QR code generators we have for plugins in WordPress now. You know, that is a serious cesspool, even worse than it was the last time I was there. 
There's a <laughs> lot of plugins in there that just plain out suck. And then there's a lot oh, of, no. and well, I went through about seven or eight before I finally found the right one to do what I needed to do. The biggest problem I found with the plugins that are being top or touted as for QR codes on your site is they create a QR code that you can't download and use elsewhere. It creates it and puts it on your web page. Well, that's really freaking useful. They've already found your web page. What do they need the QR code for? Unless maybe to direct them off to buy something. I don't know. And <laughs> I found a few of them. What I needed was something that I could just put a URL. It would generate a QR code. I could download the the PDF image of it and take that PDF or not PDF, but um, PNG image, PNG image, and I could take that PNG image and I could throw it into uh, Illustrator into the flyer I was building, make it the right size, and boom, we have a QR code that people can now photograph pop they go straight to the to the web page in question so the one i've got for you is qr redirector very useful plugin this plugin here it allows you to go in and create as many qr codes as you want now if you want to put them on your web page you can then take the image and put it on a web page you can then also download the image, use it elsewhere, use it in stuff, get people, just make stickers of QR codes and put them everywhere. Sooner or later, you're going to get someone to actually snapshot it. Or nowadays, I understand phones hit a QR code, they immediately want to do something with them. Back oh, in, that's a little bit disturbing. It's very disturbing. But back in the day, you actually had to have a QR code reader app on your phone and have it open for it, QR code. Now, if you if you if you're getting ready to take a photo, it sees the QR code. It'll ask you if you want to follow this QR code. So. Well, at least it doesn't do it automatically, but yeah. still, <laughs> lots of QR codes, I'm sure, are still viruses. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. They'll, they'll lead you to all kinds of places you really don't want to go. Down into the thing is, anyway, I found this one very, very useful. Uh, excellent. It worked great. You go in, you can you can put, you generate the QR code. It uses... Um, um, oh, geez. Why did that word just jump out of my head? Um, post. It uses custom post types to uh, create the QR codes. The one problem I did find with it, which isn't that big a deal because I am adapting to using uh, Gutenberg, is that it does not work in the classic editor. It only works with Gutenberg. So you got to use Gutenberg to, to go set it up, and then it, then it shows you all the rest of the information you need to create the QR code. And you can put a little bit of a description and title on it. Go put the URL that you want the page to go to, save it, post it. You can put it on your site with a short code, etc. Very useful, very quick, excellent plugin, work great. It is a freebie. It's not actually uh, all that used, and it's kept relatively up to date, which I did find a lot of the plugins for QR codes. Some of them haven't been updated in like five, six years. So you want to avoid those ones if you run into them. At any rate, that's all I got here. The QR Redirector. Fantastic freebie plugin. Does everything it needs to do. So I give it a five dragon rating. Nice. Hemdian did mention authors can put a QR code on bookmarks and other merch, which oh, I think is kind of cool. Oh, yeah. There, there's lots of places. And nowadays, people are more accepting of QR codes with the with the the covid thing that uh you know restaurants touchless menus and blah 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 yeah. you know all that stuff it, it sort of gave qr codes a resurgence and they're being used more and more i've seen it a few times i go to a restaurant and they've got a qr code on the table for their menu and i look at them like they're crazy and i say can i get a real menu you <laughs> know and they do have them they just don't want to hand them out for some reason so well just everyone listening make sure that before you actually scan a QR code, don't scan the random ones on the bus or <laughs> randomly around town. Just don't do it. Yeah. You will end up somewhere you really don't want to be. Yeah. As a friend of mine learned firsthand. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the whole thing, man. You can and and the thing is there's people that will do the rant scan the random one. It makes me tempted to go create a whole bunch of stickers with random QR codes that lead them all to all <laughs> sorts of strange places on the internet, maybe even into the dark webs. Uh, if you just put in a dot, like, you know, the, the period dot into mm. Google, it to air, not Google, um, into YouTube, it takes you into some really weird places. I have to look into <laughs> that one. That sounds entertaining. All right. So 
WordPress tips. All right. Whee! Hello. Uh, so this is our newer segment, and we would love to have some feedback from our producers out there on what would be most helpful and useful here, whether or not what I've been saying has been useful. That'd be really great. I uh, got some making sites tips. Now, this is for people who are really just getting into it. One of the first things you should do is set yourself up a sandbox site. Your aim is to test absolutely everything on the site. Break it, build it, play around with it. Once in a while, you will have to erase everything on this site and bring it back to empty because testing all these various things and breaking it in the most funny ways, you'll end up with problems like, you know, being locked out and you'll have to hack into your own site there. Or the site is so broken that no plugins will work on anymore. Everything will just break it. And that is to be expected. It's like the scrap piece of paper you test your colors on when you're an artist. Every once in a while, the paper has to be refreshed. It's the same thing with the sandbox. Hello. Figuring out how am, am I are you, you not you, hearing me? You cut all you cut out for a second there. Oh, okay. So the sandbox site is really good for figuring out how to make not just pages and plugins work, but for figuring out how to make things like subdomains and how to change your PHP, how to fix any how to fix a broken anything. And because it's a sandbox site, there's absolutely no stress if you need to reset it back to manufacturer settings, so to speak, or you need to just delete everything. It, it's, one, it's something that is there for you to build up and then destroy like a sandcastle, hence the name sandbox site. Before you get starting, um, before you start getting to the point of fixing sites, like actual people's sites, definitely have a sandbox to test out absolutely everything. Yeah, absolutely. Must have a sandbox site. Go spend that extra 15 bucks a year and get a special domain that is just your sandbox site. Oh, yeah. I'm so grateful for my sandbox site. I have broken it in so many fantastic ways. I've even almost stumped you a couple times on how to fix it. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> when you throw everything, including the kitchen sink, at a uh, website, it makes it very entertaining what kind of mishmash it turns out. Oh, yeah. My, but you, uh, you my, do learn my... a lot. You do learn a lot when you do that, especially when you break it, you know, because then you got yeah. to gotta fix it. So you learn a whole lot that way. Yeah, my sandbox is at the point where I have to reset it now. Hmm. But currently, it looks so entertaining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So a couple more tips here. If you are wanting to get into working on sites, whether you want to be in WordPress, DreamWorks, what have you, you will need to learn the very basics of code. Like, I'm talking about HTML, CSS, and jQuery. I mean, I myself am still a bit rusty on jQuery, but I, I am working on learning it. And But through learning HTML and CSS, it's helped me to figure out what's going on with so many sites at this point. And I've been able to solve so many problems and make things work that I would otherwise have had no clue what to do on. Another good tip is to get yourself a browser like or similar to Firefox Developer and play around with the Inspect option. You right-click on some part of a website, go down the options to the bottom, and choose Inspect. And then you look at all that information that pops up. You'll have a, a bunch of CSS and other things there, and they have these little checkmark boxes. You uncheck a few boxes, see what happens to the site. It's not going to do anything permanently to the site you're on. You're the only one who sees what changes here. So you play around with it. Learn what different things do. Start figuring out what different aspects of this area are for, how to use them. And once you start figuring that out, that will also help you in what you're doing if you want to get into working on websites and fixing them. Playing around with things is how we learn. Don't be afraid to break things, change things, reset things. Short of setting your computer on fire, there's really not much you can do that's bad for you and your learning curve. Nope. And I wouldn't recommend setting your computer on fire. No, that, that would be bad for your learning curve. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Hemdian said a couple things here. <laughs> One, he, he wants to scatter QR codes around downtown to make digital <laughs> treasure hunt. That, that is actually done. Yeah, that's done fairly regularly, QR codes yeah. and treasure hunts. 
And he said, I use desktop server to make sandboxes on my PC. Sadly, it's no longer supported. Oh, that sucks. That sounds like it'd be really useful. Oh, desktop server is a great pl uh, program. I used it for several years. I didn't, I used it for local development for several years. The problem is it took up too much, too many resources on my computer. Mm. But yeah, desktop server was great. I didn't know they'd uh, abandoned full on development on it though. I hadn't used it now for about two or three years. So that's a shame. It was a great pro. It was a great program. Yeah, M MS Edge has inspect. All the browsers have a functionality on them. Um, Chrome has the closest to uh, Firefox Developer Edition, but I just don't like Chrome. I don't like the way they think. Google doesn't. Google thinks in odd ways from me. I've tried all of the different browsers, and I've tried their inspect thing, and. Firefox was the easiest for me to yeah. understand and comprehend when I was first learning. Mm -hmm. um, the other ones, once I understood the basics, yeah. moving on to the other ones, I was able to kind of wrap my head around what they what they were showing me and how to work it. But I did find Firefox Developer Edition to be the easiest one to yeah. learn on. And that was the one that I liked. I, there's a lot of stuff in Firefox Developer Edition that uh, you can, can look mm -hmm. at the, the console and other stuff for digging into the code. There's a lot of good mm -hmm. stuff there. All right. Well, I guess it's time for you. All right. So my plugin for today is Full Work Security Scanner. I'm always keeping my eye out for new and upcoming security plugins. This one caught my eye. It's not a full-on security plugin, but it is a really decent scanning plugin that tells you quite a bit about what's going on with your site. Once installed and activated, you'll find the settings on the left-hand menu under Full Work Scanner. In the settings, you can set the time to do the scan. It is automatically set to 10.02, and it's got three stars. And this translates to 10 after 2 a.m. scan every night. I changed the time to test it out, and it worked. It was quite interesting. But you can also just delete it all and leave it blank to stop it from doing any security scans at all until you want to, if so desired. Below the settings, you will find reports. Here, you can look to find the following information. WordPress core version, installed themes, whether they are abandoned or need an update, or have, um, or have a vulnerability. Plugins, whether they are abandoned or need an update or have a vulnerability, and a detailed report of any vulnerabilities found anywhere on your site. The plugin will also helpfully send an email to you to notify you if there is something to check or if something that needs checking, if the scan finds anything that is a potential security risk to your website. You are able to accept any warnings or errors noted in the reports page. A good example is having a theme that is no longer supported, but you are happy with it and don't want to change it, so you accept the warning and ignore the security risk. You can accept the warning with any plugin or theme that you know is not actually a full-on security risk and just keep going with what you're doing, and it won't bug you again. A major bonus, this security report will also show you an extract of the change log where available for plugins with available updates. I thought this was pretty cool because it makes it a little easier to be able to read the change log right there rather than having to click through the various options before getting to the change log of any plugin needing updating. Knowing if there is an issue with your plugins, themes, and or core is exceedingly helpful when trying to figure out an issue like being locked out of your site for some unknown reason. One feature I would like to see in this is the option to complete a full scan on demand. Currently, the, this is a brand new plugin fresh out of the box. So perhaps this is a future they will add sometime down the line. But as it currently is, I find it helpful. It's just, I, I appreciate the scan once a night, but then having it scan once a night can also take up a lot of space. But if we had the option to tell it to scan like once a month or have on-demand scanning, I would think that would be a lot more helpful. I love what they're doing with the plugin. It's just the timing of the scanning and the ability to have it on demand that I think would really be useful. So I rate this at four dragons. Very cool. Everyone needs a good security plug. Yeah. Uh, it's time to donate to WP Plugins A to Z.
So our producer know-how and donation segment. We have three levels of producers that help to keep the show's larder stocked to the bursting. We have our freelance producers, backroom producers, and our war room producers. There are special perks for backroom and war room producers that you can learn about on our site, WPPlugins, A to Z.com. Just click on Time, Treasure, Talent Donations on our main menu, and you can learn all the nitty-gritty details on how you can add your two cents. You can also check out our show notes. We have a lot of information right there for you. <clears throat> and you can join in and be part of your own production and support the show at the same time. There are loads of ways to use us as your tool to get out there, like getting an interview, leaving a review for a plugin, or donating your own plugin review or your own plugin license. I recommend you give it a go and see how it helps. You can check out our show notes in this section to see all the ways to be part of your own production. And by using us as your tool, you're not just helping yourself out here. You're also helping us out, which makes you our producer. So go and check out our show notes. Find out what you can do. We have not re received any questions or notes this week. I'm a little sad. I like hearing from our listeners out there. Uh, we do have some miscellaneous announcements from, uh, from us and our producers, though. So... Nothing from our producers for this particular section, but if anyone out there would like to announce uh, that they are having a meetup or that they'll be on stage at a word camp or anything like that, let us know and we'll add it here and help to get our your news out to the world. Uh, you can go to meetup.com slash pro slash WordPress to see if there is a meetup somewhere nearby you because they have a whole list there of meetups for WordPress all over the world. The next Victoria, BC meetup will be on July 1st. Now, this meetup uh, aims to happen on the first of every month, just so everyone is aware. I'll just keep reminding everyone every week. And there is only one word camp happening in July, and it's happening in the Philippines on July 8th. I don't think there's anything happening in June. I'll have to double check that, but you can go to central.wordcamp.org and see for yourself. And you can reach us. There's a few ways you can reach us. If you have anything you want to send in to us, like, you know, the whole snail mail version, that would be pretty cool. We'd love to hear from our from our producers out there. Love a handwritten note. That'd be really cool. You can find our snail mail address here in our show notes. But you can also reach us through our virtual addresses, too. And we have made sure that those are in the show notes as well. The, today's plugins we covered were... I covered up the QR Redirector by Nikki Blight. It's a great QR code generator. You can download the uh, PNG file of the QR code you generate. And you can uh, apply any URL you want to the QR codes. Go check it out. I rated it at a... Five Dragon level. And I covered Fullworks Security Scanner by Fullworks. Scan, you can scan your site for vulnerabilities, check for updates in plugins, themes, or your core, and check for abandoned plugins or themes. I rated it for Dragons. Very cool. It's question and answer time with John and Amber. If anyone out there has any questions they'd like to have asked here on the show, you can send them in to me at amber at wppro.ca. We'll see if we can stump my dad. First question. How would you recommend getting, how do you recommend someone get started in this business? Specifically, where would you start them? What would you have them do and why? Well, if someone wants to get started in developing WordPress, I tell them to check with ChatGPT and find out that they're wasting their time. No, just kidding. Um, let's, uh, what you want to do if you're going to get started in this is, number one, learn how to buy a domain because you're going to need to know how buying and registering and uh, pointing domains works. Uh, number two, once you've bought your domain, you need a hosting provider. You can come see johnoverall.com or the new company we're launching, launching uh, July 1st, WPProA2ZHost.com, and get yourself good quality hosting. Then once you've got the quality hosting set up, learn how to set up WordPress, either the old-fashioned way by learning how to FTP your stuff right up into it, or 
many hosting providers have one-click installs for WordPress, which isn't the best way to go. You should always do the five-minute install of WordPress. It literally does take five minutes, you know, except for the time it takes to upload the files, which sometimes if you're having a bad internet day, it can take upwards of seven to 10 minutes. So anyway, in 15 minutes time, you can have it installed. Once you've installed WordPress, just start throwing plugins at it and themes at it until you sort of get an understanding of how it works. That's basically what I'd have someone do if they were just getting started. You know, if I just want somebody to do work for me and they're getting started, well, I'll, I'll go through and set all that up stuff for them and I'll give them access to a site and tell them to go play around and make something happen. So, that makes sense to you? Or did I stump you into silence? No, I was just looking at what Hemdian wrote. He, oh. uh, <laughs> He made kind of a good point there. Minus one Jagan for not having the required super long plugin name. <laughs> well, we haven't had super long plugin names for a few a few episodes now, come to think of it. Actually, yeah, you're right. We, we've mostly had normal plugin names. I guess we've just been on a roll. Okay, well, we'll have to we'll have to do an episode where we hunt down a super long plugin name <laughs> just to make it entertaining again. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> I hadn't even thought about that. But no, the, the, the minus one plugin or the minus one plugin, jeez. Minus one, dra minus <laughs> the, one the dragon. The minus one dragon was because although it does have the ability to set the time, it's. Uh, yeah, you're talking about the plugin you reviewed, which doesn't yeah. have the ability to do on demand. It's like, if you can set a time for it, why didn't you guys create a button that say click here to run a scan? Yeah, that, that's what the, that is what the minus one dragon for is the, the inability to do it on demand. It's yeah. a scanning plugin. Scanning plugins are generally needed on demand. Yes, yes. So that that's what it was for. All right. Well, hopefully <laughs> I gave you enough information on, on getting someone started on the basics of WordPress there. Yeah, you did. Uh, next question is, what theme would you recommend to a person who wants to create a WooCommerce site? I wouldn't recommend a theme at all. I'd recommend uh, the basics of Elementor and the base theme for Elementor. Nothing more anymore. I've been down the road of themes, custom themes that give you cool layouts and everything. You, you can create all those. You can do it. If you're a Gutenberg user, you can do it with the default WordPress theme in Gutenberg now. You no longer need those custom themes. Those custom themes were a need, and I, they were needed back in the day. We're talking previous to three, four years ago, everything previous three or four years ago, going back for 10 years. You know, you needed those custom themes to help create that custom stuff unless you were a theme writer and you wanted to go in there and create your own custom templates. Not anymore. There's, I, I would recommend, like, I've done my, I've done the, the tavern using just uh, Elementor. I started with a theme, but I've slowly ripped out the theme and replaced it with just plain Elementor pages and recustomized them in Elementor the way I want them to be. And the last few websites I built in the last uh, last uh, four months, I just went pure plain Elementor and customized the, uh, customized the templates in Elementor the way I wanted them to work. It's way easier. Yeah, the so. template, working off of templates, I've been finding a lot easier too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They, it, doesn't, it doesn't counteract each other like when you use a theme. Yeah, that's the problem with the theme is there's so many things in the way. And then, of course, the other problems with the themes is they throw plugins into the theme and eventually those plugins break. And then you've lost everything, mm -hmm. you know? So now if your plugin breaks, since it's separate from everything else you've done, if it breaks, well, you replace that plugin with a plugin that's similar function that actually still works. It's easier. It's like, I wish I, I wish some of this stuff was around a few years ago where I'd had enough brains and smarts to recognize it. But yeah, no theme, just go straight, straight from square one and do it. When would you recommend someone use a theme? I don't have a recommendation for a theme anymore. Okay. There's there's nothing that cannot be done either purely in Gutenberg or in Elementor that a theme does. All right. Well, I have a couple more questions to ask after the closing credits. All right. Well, let's let our girl take us out of here. For those of you listening on the downloads, you're missing out on the really cool stuff after this. So you're going to have to go over to the YouTubes and check it all out. Okay, let our girl take us out. Reminders for the show. 
All show notes can be found at wppluginsatoz.com. And while you're there, subscribe to the newsletter for more useful information delivered directly to your inbox. WP Plugins A to Z is a show that offers honest and unbiased reviews of plugins created by developers because you support the show. Help keep the show honest and unbiased by going to wppluginsatoz.com slash donate and set the donation level that fits your budget. Help us make the show better for you by subscribing and reviewing the show at Stitcher Radio, Google Play, and in the iTunes Store. You can also leave us a review on our Facebook page using wppluginsatoz.com slash Facebook. You can also watch the show live on YouTube, check out the screencasts, and training videos, and remember to subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications of all new videos. Follow the show on Twitter at wppluginsatoz. John can also be reached at his website, johnoverall.com, or email him directly, john at wppro.ca. Thanks for joining us and have a great day. Thanks for listening to the show. This show is copyright by johnoverall.com. So until next time, have yourselves a good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you happen to be out there on the globe today. Alrighty then, we are now solely on the YouTubes. Let's see what we got. So for this first question, you're going to have to think back to when you were using themes. Mm -hmm. How do you switch themes in your site? You upload your new theme. You make it active. Everything breaks. You go and fix it. And can you use two themes at once? No. How come? Because only one can be active. They can't merge at all? Well, you could, if you were a good coder, you could merge them together and then activate it as a single theme. Okay, so it has to only be one theme yeah, at a time. You remember, okay, a theme is contained in a directory um, on WordPress, and all its necessary files for the theme are contained in that directory. Every theme has its necessary files, you know, including its functions file. So if you're going to use... You, you, you can only activate one of those directories at a time in WordPress. WordPress won't recognize the other themes as active. It'll recognize they exist, but it won't recognize them active. If you want two themes with content from each theme to work together, you'd have to figure out how to merge them all into one directory and one, one functions file, and then activate that, and then see if you can figure out the nightmare mess that would create. Because <laughs> it would create a serious nightmare mess. So All right. it just it can't it it can't be done. WordPress doesn't doesn't have ability to do something like that. It's not that I'm aware. So if your site is older and has a lot of content, will you be able to switch themes and keep the site from breaking? No. Come on, I I, I you helped me rebuild a website that had one theme we had to rip out and put in, put back in. Now, mm -hmm. granted, we sort of cheated because we got rid of most of the function of the theme while leaving that theme active, and we used Elementor to compensate for all the other stuff we wanted to do. See, Elementor is not a theme. Elementor is a plugin. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's got a completely different way of doing things. Like with Elementor, you still have to have a theme in Elementor. And that theme is, is best, best used as the base theme in Elementor, which has no fancy pages or anything in it. It just has the basic theme functions. So, so you're, you're kind of, you're kind of lift, lift there. It's like, if your site's older, like I've done it a few times, you know, updated websites that were on old themes to new themes. We, we've done a couple recently, you know, and we activated, we activated the Elementor theme, everything broke and we had to rebuild every page. You got to keep the, if you're doing that, you've got to keep the one site live and you got to do it on a dev site so you can rebuild every page and compare it to the live site. Oh, yeah. So that's the only thing you can do. There is no, there is no getting around it. It's going to break. Okay. Because themes have their specific layouts of doing stuff. Another theme has a different way of, of doing all its layouts and other stuff. 
So once you activate the new theme, everything's going to break. Layouts are going to break. The whole kit and caboodle is going to go right out the window. Well, it was worth asking if there was any chance of it. Nope. I've tried. <laughs> I've already tried something like that, see what I could get away with. <laughs> you know, if you want to see how much fun it is, go create a, uh, go create a, um, um, what's it called? It's um, a sandbox, a sandbox? Pa sandbox page and, uh, you know, throw shit tons of sample content into it and, and it's nice, pretty, pretty layouts and then flip themes, see what it does. You'll find out real quick exactly how well it doesn't work. Yep. It's actually really interesting. Some of the results you get when you do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a never-ending thing, but yeah. No, not much can be done about it. It's just a... Oh, and Hemdian said Highlander rule. There can only be one. Yes, there can there can there can be only one. Apparently, he disagrees with the fact that I love the movies, though. Oh, <laughs> uh, the first Highlander was good. The second one mediocre, and the rest of them suck wind. You know, I thought they were all pretty entertaining. No, and even the series, I watched the Highlander series, and it was meh. I watched the Highlander series, too. First movie is my favorite. Yeah. First movie was actually good, but then they, then they lost track of it. It got a little weird, yeah. <laughs> it went off into the weird zone. They got all the right, weird well, brothers to write it. All right. Well, that's it, folks. Thanks a lot, Hemdian, for showing up. We greatly appreciate your entertainment and your little snippets in here. And uh, as always, we'll toss in some music here and call it a day. These are the days of thunder. We're going to make time stand still. <laughs> Hey, folks that's all we got for you now take care <laughs> bye bye take care oh my god that is amazing oh, oh obviously we just lost the satellite